so welcome to the LBD RSATS Club. Today, um, we're going to go over, um, oh, well, uh, we're going to go over um, R and Bioconductor versions. And that's because the new Bioconductor version is about to be released. Um, and um, we're in a weird period of time where like there's, uh, it's a bit more confusing um and i wanted to explain why this is a little bit confusing right and so for some of you it might be the first time that you're um changing our versions and by conductor versions um and so i thought it'd be good to have like a little video explaining all of this because this happens actually every um a version of this happens every six months another uh, type of change happens every year okay so <clears throat> why are we in, in a, on a weird period right now? So um, R um, changes versions um, one year, one time per year right now. Uh, and by that, I mean what's called the, 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 the minor version, or so actually it's like the major the minor. Um, so what is, what is this? So if you open your R, um, program, right? And then uh, let me let me use the annotate tools from Zoom. Um, if you type in our version into your uh, R console, you'll get a little bit of output, and this includes actually major and minor versions of of your R installation. And uh, a full um, R installation has three digits, so x dot y dot um, um, z or zeta. Um, and what I'm really talking about, what changes every year is a y. This is what changes every year. Occasionally the x changes, but um, that doesn't happen every year. Um, and so when they're, um, uh, where we're about to release the new version of R, I mean, CRAN is about to release a new version of R, we end up being in a weird period where there's actually three text labels for the versions of R. So normally, let me clean my annotations. Uh, normally, for like about 11 months of the year, um, we only have two text versions, R released and then R developed, right? So that is like, what is the version that people, that people are encouraged to use? That's the R release. And then the R developed is, that's mostly for people that are like making R packages that want to test them, um, make sure they work properly before they're shared with everyone else. And so for the last 11 months or so, uh, approximately 11 months, our release was um, R4.0. It had like, you know, it changed a little bit. It was like R4.00, then R4.01. We're up to R4.05, but really like all of those are fairly compatible between them. Um, and now R4.1 is about to be released. Uh, I think in the, in the next few weeks. Um, and we didn't have an R alpha, but now because we're, we're in this one month just before um, R gets released, we now have this new text label called R alpha. And so we're right now in this like approximately one month period um, uh, in orange where we have three different text labels, R release, that's still R 4.0, R alpha that actually corresponds to R4.1. So we can see that it moved up. And we have a new version of R develop. So in this particular case, it's R4.2. Um, that version of R develop um, is most, most of the people right now don't need to be using this. Um, uh, very, very few people are actually working with uh, it's like the future R devel really at this point. Most people are working with either R release or R alpha. 
once this happens, the next 11 months or so, we'll be back to a similar period we were right now where we, we're gonna have our release be R4.1 and then R develop will be R4.2, right? So all of this is a bit confusing and that's because we're in this one month weird period right now where things are um, different than usual. And that's because um, a lot of times people use the text, um, the text descriptions for the R versions, so R release, R, R develop, but the meaning of what that text, like the actual number behind that text actually changes, right? Um, so I'm explaining all of this because several people this week ran into this issue um, and, um, and because of this, all, all these different R versions, I'm gonna explain a bit how to actually install multiple R versions in your computer. So uh, some people wanted to install some programs on the cluster and the R version in the cluster for R develop was is R4.2.0. And that is like too far in the future right now. And people were getting weird installation errors. So we don't wanna be using R4.2 just yet. We'll use it in maybe a month, but not just yet, not just yet. And so that's like a bit of the history of R versions. Why does this matter, right? So let me look at the bioconductor page over here. The installation instructions specify what are the R versions you should be using for the two versions of bioconductor. So bioconductor also has a release and a development version. So currently, as of today, the release version is R4, sorry, R eh, bioconductor 3.12. That's the release version of bioconductor and you should be using our version 4.0 with it. The development version is 3.13 and you should be using R4.1 with it. Why does this matter? Well, we have actually some work that depends on packages that are super, super, super new. And so they are only available on the development version of Biconductor 3.13. Um, so, because we want to be using Biconductor 3.13, we need to have R4.1 available, right? Um, now, um, there's this other page about how to use Devel from Biconductor, which is like, how can you use the development version of Biconductor, right? And so this is where it becomes even, even a little bit more complicated. I just told you that R updates once per year, right? Biconductor actually updates twice per year, typically the, the first time around uh, April and the other time around October, right? Um, so this means that like the actual version of R that you need to have for using Biconductor Bell changes over, uh, over the year, right? Um, so um, as of today, Biconductor Bell. 3.13, you need to use R4.1. Um, in May, once um, R4.1 is released, um, Bioconductor Devel is still going to, um, is going to use um, R4.2. And then later on in October, Bioconductor Devel will still be using R4.2. I think, if I got it right, or uh, maybe not. Maybe I messed that up, sorry. Um, uh, let's see. From uh, mid-April to the October Biconductors, oh, uh, sorry, I got that wrong. From mid-April, so beginning of May, the developers should be using our release. So we'll still be using R4.1. Um, so all of this is a bit complicated and I just messed it up right now when I was explaining things. Um, and so this is why, Depending on what part of the year you're in, using Bioconductor Devel means using different versions of R. And there's different ways of, of, of making sure you're, you're, um, you have this, right? All right. And so the last Bioconductor link I wanted to show is the release schedule. Um, so right now, uh, we're in this period where um, R4.1 is about to be released. It's actually scheduled to be released on Wednesday, May 19th. 
And so that sets the dates for all of the Bioconductor updates. So as a Bioconductor developer, um, like right now, um, we have until basically until uh, May, uh, May 12th really for making changes to Bioconductor 3.13. Why does this matter? Because like some of us were working on um, the special LIBB uh, bioconductor package and the special experiment bioconductor packages. Both of those are like really, really like changing frequently. And um, we wanna make sure that they're stable before they become widely available to everyone else. All right. Uh, so that's the background of, of the Bioconductor versions, the R versions, and um, like a little bit of, the, uh, of what makes it complicated. Now, let's imagine you actually want to install more than one R, R version, and you don't, uh, um, you can do this in, uh, for different reasons, actually. Sometimes you want to be able to rerun um, code, old code, um, with packages you had you know, maybe two years ago. So this actually happened to Nick, I think, where uh, we're um, like some of our code um, use R version 3.6. And so having in your computer um, a version of R 3.6 can be useful, right? Um, so how do you install R, right? So normally we go to the CRAN. I'm gonna close some of these tabs to make it simpler. Um, so you go to CRAN, right? And so right now I'm on a Mac computer. And so I'll show you how to um, install multiple versions of R on a Mac computer first. Then I'll show you um, how to do it on Windows. And then we'll go to Gypsy, uh, the computing cluster where we have multiple versions of R. So you, you go to CRAN. And so um, let me um, put them side to side. Uh, the, two, the two documents. So I'm going to be clicking on the links on the right side, but like you can also find the links on the left side. So um, at CRAN, this is where you can install like R, right? However, because we want to have multiple versions of R installed, I'm actually going to install something else called R switch that is that this only works for Mac computers. It doesn't work for Windows computers as far as I know. Um, um, and it's a nice utility uh, that uh, will help us have multiple versions of R. Um, and so R switch over here, when you read a little bit of the text says like you can download it from the landing page. I'm gonna click here on landing page. Um, Oh, well, maybe I should have just put that link directly instead of linking to the guide. Sorry about that. All right, so here you can download um, R switch 1.7, which is the latest version. Let's download that. Um, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to open it. Okay. And so now I have a little, this little R switch app that you can drag to applications, which um, let me open that also. You can drag and drop it to your applications folder. Right? Um, I already have R switch installed, so I'm not going to do that right now, but that's how you would install R switch. What happens once you install it? You can if you open it. You're gonna see this little icon on the top of, of that I see on the top of my screen, which is kind of like a little eye with um, some sparkles around it. Um, it's this is this symbol again, uh, this logo symbol. Um, so if you click on it, now it's gonna tell you like, oh, actually you have. In my case, I already have. Um, six versions of R in my Mac computer, right? I have R 3.3, 3.4, 3.5, 3.6, 4, and, and, and 4.1, for example. Um, so this will make it nice because like, let's say I actually want to change to running R 4.0. I'll click there. If I go to my 
our studio. If I open our studio, I'm, or just because it's faster, I'm gonna open our on the terminal. Um, and so we can see like, oh, here, you have our, you're loading our 4.5, 0.5. Um, so that makes it nice. I'm gonna switch now to R4.1, open R, and now I'm using R4.1, right? So we wanna have this nice utility that will make us, make our life easier to switch between R versions. Um, so that's why we wanna install it. After installing that, we can go back to the CRAN website. And so uh, on a Mac computer, we click here on download R for Mac. Um, there's a lot of text here, but I'm going to go to um, um, uh, the rmac-project.org website, which is where um, you can download experimental builds and updates. That's what it says over here. If you scroll further down the website, it says like, or uh, at the end, it says like, oh, information about the recent daily builds from for R3, our patch and our develop are available from this website. Um, and so this uh, website over here has a ton of information too, uh, but let's look at the section over here called the 90 builds for Mac OS. So over here, we're gonna be able to download the latest versions of Mac. And so we have here R4.0 branch, which is going to be R4.0.5, R4 which is the latest R4.0. And we also have the latest R4.1, which is a R4.1 branch alpha. You'll notice that R4.1 um, R actually shows up twice right now. And that's because if you look at the OS column, that is the version of Mac that this is compiled for. Um, um, one of them is you have to have a minimum of a version uh, of Mac version high Sierra. Uh, this other version over here, you have to have a minimum of the Mac OS Big Sur. Um, what is another difference between them? Um, the difference is that this, this one, this, these sections over here in the bottom right now, those are compiled for the new M1 um, Max. I don't think anyone in this session right now has an M1 Max, but if you do, you'll need to use those versions instead of the, uh, of the version that, that were compiled for um, the Intel Max. All right, so let's say we want to install um, R4.0 patch, right? You'll notice that there's two options. There is a tar file um, that is compressed. And then there's another file that is a .pkg, which is a Mac installer. The Mac installer is easier to use. So that's the one I'm going to download, the r4.0 branch .pkg. Um, so I'll download this. Um, and if you read further the details, of, of this section is going to be like, oh, actually, um, um, if you want to have multiple versions of R, check this manual over here. Um, and like, that's the link I posted. And eventually you're going to find out if you read all of that documentation that you want to run this command, if you want to have multiple versions um, of R. So I'm going to run that command over here on my computer. I use my password. Um, and now that I did that, I'm going to install R4.0. We're going to try and install it. And so you'll notice that like the installer didn't actually open. And so that's an issue be, um, that uh, we can solve by going to the system preferences, clicking security and privacy. Um, then going to the general tab and wait, why is this still not open? Mm. Oh, okay, so you try to verify it. Eventually it's like, oh, we cannot open it because it's Apple could not detect whether it was malicious or not. So that's why we go to the, all this um, uh, settings, security and privacy general. And then at the bottom here will be like, oh, 
our 4.0 uh, branch was blocked. Do you still want to open it? Yes, I want to open it. Um, and then it's like, oh, are you really sure you want to open it? Yes, I want to open it. And now we can proceed. And I'm going to install um, R4.0.5 on my computer. Um, time I'm going to download the R4.1 alpha. Uh, I'll download the version that is compiled for High Sierra, which is an Intel Mac computer, um, which is a type of computer I have. So I'll download that over here. Um, uh, and I guess because I'm doing all these Zoom stuff, my computer's a little bit slower right now. Um, I'll explain in the meantime a little bit more the difference between the tar um, uh, gzip versus the branch uh, .pkg file. The difference is that this .pkg includes the R uh, graphical user interface or GUI uh, in short. Um, and so a lot of you might not actually be using the R GUI anymore because most of you actually open R through um, R Studio, right? Um, uh, so like, if you're interested in having the R and GUI, this is what you, uh, you, you would want that. If you download the tar file, um, you need to then unpack it into uh, your root directory. And so you can do that with this type of command where you have downloaded the tar file uh, you might need to use uh, sudo before tar in case you need to give your computer admin permissions to do this command. And so this will um, unpack the compressed um, files at the specific location that uh, you're requesting. Right? Um, okay. Looks like an uh, installation. Um, all right. Um, things are different when we're using Zoom, I guess. Um, so, um, let me see. So assume that this installation has completed. What you need to do, need to do, like if you wanted to then install the R4.1 alpha, is to again run this um, sudo package util or get command before you actually start the installation of, oh, it's like, it's done, cool. Move it to the trash. Uh, let me actually do what I was going to say. So I'll use that command again. Um, and now I can start installing R4.1, which Apple is going to try to verify. It's going to fail to verify. And we're going to have to open it again from the settings. Um, um, your preferences and security and privacy, security, uh, the general tab. You'll see it over here, it just popped up on the bottom. Um, I'm going to open it anyway. Um, then it'll ask again, like, do you really want to do this? I'll say, yes, I really want to do this. Um, and then I can install R4.1. Um, so this is actually fairly nice because like, I mean, I had those versions installed, but I didn't have the versions from today or I mean from yesterday. These are versions from April 29th. Um, so if you really, really want to have the latest versions of R, that's how you could do it. So that's going to install um, and uh, it's going to take a little bit of time. And so once it's done, you'll have multiple versions of R installed. 
you cannot be using two of them at the same time. You can only be using one, right? So um, it's best to then like make sure that you've closed all your R um, sessions and before you use R switch to change R versions, right? Um, so you can't just have like a ton of R studios open and a lot of like terminals with like different versions, different simultaneous versions of R. Um, that is not what this tool is helpful for. Um, there's always ways to do that if you really, really, really wanted to, right? But um, I won't get into those. So now let me change computers. Um, so let me stop sharing on this one. And now we're going to switch to uh, Windows. Um, let me get this keeper on the way. So Windows is actually a little bit simpler in a sense. Um, um, and so again, if we start from CRAN, um, Windows over here has, we're going to say like, oh, download R for Windows. We'll click over here and it has less information than the Mac website. Um, um, uh, but that's still okay, right? So we actually want to have two things when we're installing R on Windows. We want to have something that's called R tools, which is one, what you need to have if you're going to be compiling packages from source. So I'm going to install that first. Um, and so there's actually a couple versions of, of um, our tools. Um, you really want the 64 bit uh, version of it. Um, 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 I'll add it to the tool dot data. Um, so I'm going to download this version um, of our tools. And in the meantime, I'm going to open my um, file explorer. I'm going to go to um, a directory. So I actually want to in, go and install them on my uh, D disk. Um, and over here, you want to you want to go to a root disk. So either D or C or whichever disks you have on your on your Windows computer. Um, because you want to install R tools and R in a path that has no spaces on Windows. Um, spaces can, can sometimes add problems. And so here I'm going to make a folder called R tools. I'm also going to make another folder called R. Um, so now that I did that, I'm going to install R tools. Mm -hmm. Um, so yes, and so I'm going to browse, go to my data D disk, select our tools, and that's where it's going to install them in our tools, um, that directory. I'm not going to change any of the other parameters. And so the R tools installation is on their way. Right. Um, let's go back on the browser. And the next thing I want to install is base R. So this is what it says like, oh, this is what you want to install if you're installing R for the first time. At the top of the base R window, we see that it has a link to download R 4.0.05. So I'm going to download that version of R. Um, but then what if you want to have R 4.1? Where can you find it? It's so actually on the bottom of this, it says like other builds, so other versions of R. It says like patches to this release um, um, are included in the R patch snapshot build. So I'm gonna click there. And now you can see at the top that we have a link to downloading R4.1. So I'm gonna download that. In the meantime, R4.0.1. Five already downloaded, so I'm going to start installing that one too. 
uh, coil R tools is installing on the background. I want to say yes to installing R4.05. I want English. And now the main thing is that you want to change the path for you installing, installing R. You don't necessarily want to install it in the default location, which is this program files location. So I'm going to browse, go to my data did this. Then I'm going to select the R directory that I made. Um, accepting everything else. And so this is going to start installing R4.05. Actually, on this computer, I don't have RStudio installed, so I actually also need to install RStudio. Um, install RStudio Desktop. Free version. So I'll install that version too. So we have our tools installing R4.05 installing. I'm going to also start installing R.1. Uh, um, again, I select English and say yes to this. The main thing again is you want to change the location of where you're installing R4.1. So I'm going to go to the data directory, select the R folder, and that's where I'll install it. So all of these installations take a couple of minutes um, or so because uh, it has a lot of files. Uh, and R4.05 finished installing. I'm going to click there. Um, our tools also finished installing. Um, I'm going to start installing RStudio also. Um, there's one extra thing that I missed. Um, and that's because I downloaded our tools a little bit too fast. So I'm going to go back to the CRAN website um, where we had R for Windows. And I'm click again on our tools. And uh, okay, we can start the installation of our studio. Our studio, I'm going to install in the default location. Um, and so it says, like, okay. Once you're downloading, um, once you're finished installing our um, our tools, you actually need to do this. Um, um, you need to add um, um, this little command such that R will be able to find um, our tools later on. So we'll do this in a little second once we are done installing our studio on this uh, Windows computer. So, all right. I just wanted to open it. So the, because I installed multiple versions of R, and this is the first time I'm opening R Studio, R Studio is going to ask, hey, which version do you want to use? I located and I found that you have R Alpha for 32 bits, R Alpha for 64 bits, R 4.05 for 64, R 0.05 for 32. So you normally want to be using the 64-bit version. Um, and at this point, let's say I want to use the um, R4.1. So I'll select that. Um, and so unlike Mac, where we have, where we use R switch to change our versions, we're now going to be using, um, um, we're now going to be using um, R Studio itself to change versions of R. So let me just complete um, the installation of our tools by copying this and pasting it into R. Um, and so now if I go to tools, sorry, uh, session, restart R, we should be able to verify that R can locate our tools. So yeah, 
we now have completed the installation of our tools and our and let's say uh, you're like oh you know i i'm happy with r4.1 but i want to switch to r4.0 so what will you do you go to tools global options um and then over here in the general tab is like oh what is the r version you want to use i'm going to change it and again i get the same the same menu i'm going to select now the 64-bit version of r4 r4 r.0.5 select that and it's like oh well you now need to um quit and reopen our studio so i'll say okay to that um so we change to uh, take effect so i'll open our studio again after closing it and now we have our 4.0.5 right Cool, so let me stop sharing on this Windows computer. Um, let me go back to the Mac computer. Um, <clears throat> so what's the one thing that we're missing right now? We're missing Gypsy, right? Um, um, so I've shown already how to install multiple versions of R on um, Mac, then Windows. Now I'm going to log in into Gypsy, which is a compute cluster we use. I'm going to request a compute node to PRSH. And so if we type the module avail um, command, we're going to get a ton of modules listed. The ones you want to be paying attention to are the ones that start with Conda underscore R. So right now on, on Gypsy, we have R uh, 3.6, 3.6X, uh, 4.0, 4.0X, um, which that would be uh, R 4.05. We also have R develop. So this is where like you got tricky because um, for 11 months or so, our devel was R4.1, um, but now it's actually 4.2. So let's say we actually want to use R4.1. Um, Casper Daniel Hansen, who's the person that maintains the versions of, of R at the, at the cluster that we use, he just updated um, earlier today and made R4.1 available. So I'm going to copy this piece of text. I'm going to press Q to exit that window. And I want to type module load conda underscore r forward slash 4.1. So this is going to change. Um, and so let me do like our script. Uh, so I don't actually want to you know, keep bar open. I'm just going to print the version of R. And so we can see that the major version of R is four, the minor is 1.0. Let's change versions. I'm going to use module code, uh, module load con R to go back to 4.0.x. Um, I'm going to run again this little R command to get the version. And we're now at R4.0.4. Let's use, for example, con R V bell. Um, and actually, I guess it's too brand new. There's some issue with it, and it didn't even work, right? That would be actually, um, um, well, let me do it manually. If I do it manually, I, we can see here that it is actually version 4.2.0, right? Which is not the version we want to be using yet, just yet. Maybe in a month or two, but not right now. Um, cool. So with that, let me stop recording. <laughs>